Good morning. I call the order the policy uh, committee meeting of the school district workshop, uh, June 27, 2022. Uh, can you take roll call? Uh, that roll call will be now the verification of the Okay. Uh, June, can you confirm that the meeting has been talking to you and posted? Yes, it has. Our first action item is the approval of the minutes from April 19, 2022 policy committee. Do we have a motion? So moved. I'm sorry, I skipped over. I'm doing a public comment. Oh. Let <laughs> um, me address. We'll finish dealing with the minutes and we'll be back with uh, public comment. There's a motion to approve the April 19, 2022 policy committee meeting minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor of the aye. 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 The motion passes 3 to 0. We'll go back to opportunity for public comment. We do have one, one speaker today. Um, because there are six speakers or less, speakers will be notified at three minutes, but allowed up to five minutes to complete their comments. We expect all speakers to honor our time limit, refrain from using any inappropriate language, and be respectful in their comments. Speakers who do not meet these expectations may be prohibited from speaking at future board um, slash committee meetings. Speakers are here to address the board, not the audience. The school board and this committee does not endorse any comments made by members of the community here tonight this morning, we would like to remind our community members of the impact of the words on others and that our children are watching. We commit to communicating with you in a respectful and productive way and ask that you do the same. We also expect that the audience will be respectful of the speaker and of the board and refrain from responding with verbal comments, cheering, applause, or other behavior that will detract from the meeting. Please note that no obstructions can be created between the board and the audience. Visual aids cannot be used in the area behind the speaker and podium will be clear during public comment. Also, in order to respect our speakers and meeting participants, please silent your cell phone. Our first speaker this morning will be Mr. Paul Reese. Mr. Reese. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to come tonight and um, talk about something that happened about 10 years ago. Um, this board gave itself a raise. And I want to discuss this again because it really bothered me when they did it. And what they did is um, Dan Warren offered an $800 a year annual raise. He made a public announcement because this is the way it has to be done by law. You have to let the public know when you're going to give yourself a raise. He did that and had to go to committee to get approved to make sure we had the money and the funds to pay for it came back to committee the following month to get approved. At that point, someone had written an op-ed or a letter to the editor opposing it, showed up here opposing it, and Dan Warren felt the need to add another $400 to it. So it went from $800 to $1,200. He amended it without giving any notice to anybody else to comment about it. He just added 50% to it, and it was approved with two descending votes. Um, most of the people who did this are gone, but I would like a policy that would require it to have, to, if you amend it at any time, it has to come back before the board and be made public policy, be made, give public notice again. And I understand any policy can be set aside. I do get that, that you guys can vote and say, well, we want to set that policy aside. I want you to wet your finger before you stick it in our eye next time, is what I want. It was, that was absolutely ridiculous that what was done. It was absurd to, on any level. I wouldn't have cared if he would have asked originally for the $1,200 raise. I, just, okay, it's 100 bucks a month and whatever. And it wouldn't have bothered me that much. I wouldn't have probably even spoke on it. You know, Maybe a few other people would have. But it was the way it was done. You, you could just, you, it was very deceitful. And it was very underhanded. And I thought it really showed a real lack of character on his part. Um, another thing is um, a lot's not getting done here. Um, we elected a bunch of new people here and something needs to be done with our libraries and I don't see anything moving forward real quick on this and it needs to move forward quick because time's ticking. 
and um, if we need to get a consultant in here over the summer to straighten out our libraries, we need to move on that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Reese. All right, next item, uh, we already went through the approval of minutes, is the discussion item. It's discussion of the new committee structure. Uh, Dr. Cook, is that something you want to review? Sure. Um, so uh, going back about what was about two months, uh, Dr. Piasek sent out a memo uh, to the administration and to the board um, just talking about how uh, we'll handle policies going forward. So um, based off of her memo, uh, you can see just in here on the, uh, the executive summary that's been provided um, that the policy committee will handle four series of policies, our bylaws, our administration, our operations, and our relations. Um, so the, the zero series, the 1,000s, the 8,000s, and the 9,000s. Uh, the Teaching and Learning Committee will take care of the program, and that's the instructional program that we use in the district. So any policy as it pertains to that will go there. Human Resources and Compensation, 3,000 and 4,000, so those are the, um, those are the staffing uh, policies that support our professional and our support staff. Uh, the Student Services Committee will handle the student policies, the 5,000 series, and then the finance and facilities will handle finance and property. Um, at any time, uh, Mr. Montijo or Dr. Piasek uh, or Dr. Siebert or I could make a recommendation that one of these policies, that a policy goes from a different committee. So we might shift a policy just based off of what's covered in it because each policy series has, you know, somewhere between 40 <coughs> policies in it, and there's some overlay between you know, one or the other. For instance, human resources might take on a 1,000 series policy which governs the administration or the superintendent. Um, if there was something, for instance, contractual or whatever that needed to be handled, HR could handle that first and then it would go off to the whole board. So um, just so that the whole committee knows and the public knows, Mr. Montillo and I will meet prior to any of our committee meetings, uh, which we'll have a handful of them or so this year. Um, We'll try to time those up uh, so that they coincide with the NEOLA release of policies. So twice a year, uh, NEOLA will do an update to their manual. Um, once that is distributed to school districts, we'll take a review of it, um, meet with Mr. Montijo. We'll talk about dividing it up from you know where he sees it needs to go or where Dr. Piasek would see a policy needing to go. And then from there, I'll meet with the respective assistant superintendents uh, in the district to make sure that the policies, you know, have a have a review. We can ask any questions of Neola. We could refer to our legal counsel if we needed to, and then those committees will start to tackle those policies. So we'll do the same thing for those first four series that are under the policy committee. Um, and this is going to be a shift for us. I mean, as how we've operated because the policy committee <coughs> used to, you know, we'd we'd work with other committees. We'd bring other assistant superintendents in. Sometimes we'd have board members from another committee come here and speak on a policy or lend some perspective. So we'll be working through this this adjustment this year. Um, and uh, and Mr. Montillo and I will, will be in close contact as these policies come up. So if you have any questions of me, happy to take them now. Yeah, just to clarify, so if we do end up, besides today, if we do end up shifting uh, responsibility for a policy later, is that just going to be brought up in a committee meeting and do we voting on that or are we just um so yeah so the vote that will happen will be um after we set this agenda and well you'll get all of the policies so for instance say there's 10 policies that pertains to the program the 2000 series um going into our next policy committee meeting we'll do the prep work ahead of time this committee will see those policies and then it like by voting on the whole, I guess, the whole batch of policies, it'll be, you know, I, the motion would look something along the lines of I move to uh, forward the uh, presented policies to the respective committees, either as presented or as amended if, if the committee here decides to, to make a shift to that. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so my understanding is all the policies will still funnel through this committee. And Correct. we'll determine where they go, but we'll get first crack at them, so to speak. You'll have an opportunity to review them and, and lend some some perspective on them. But mm -hmm. I guess based off of my understanding is that finance will handle the finance policies. Sure. And, um, and I know that each of you as a committee member are also on other committees, so you're going to crack at them in those committees as well. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, as far as uh, this being a three-person committee for the board versus all the other committees, I believe are five. I mean, once there, there'll be more input. Right. So, I don't foresee them coming back here for any reason. Would you? Once um, they're gone to, you know, say the finance committee, there <coughs> probably is no reason for them to send it back. Correct. I mean, that's kind of the point. Correct. I mean, okay. it, I think it would be a rare situation, and I think that the, um, I mean. The committee then, the, I think the motion would be going from finance then to the full board sure. for approval. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay. You mentioned YOLA. I think we all know what it is, but could you run through that briefly, what that is and what the role is and how we use them? Sure. So um, we, about five years ago, contracted with NEOLA. Uh, it's a company out of Ohio. They work in seven or eight states right now, and they provide board policy templates to about 1,500 school districts. Mm. And what they do is they will take a look at all of the areas that a school district has to operate under. And you can see the, the 10 series here uh, in front of you, we, from bylaws to how the board operates to how the superintendent, the administration operates to what are we doing for an instructional program down to our professional and support staff policies to what do we are what do we expect of our students and what are we doing for our students in the five thousands finance property operations and then relations so what they did was is they broke the they broke the board policy down as if you were going to start a brand new school district what would you have to do you have to form a school board you'd have to have rules for the school board you'd have to hire a superintendent superintendent would have to have some guidance from the board and then uh, develop an educational program hire staff, address students, so on and so forth through the series. So hierarchically, it starts from the formation of a school district down to how you're going to relate to your public uh, in that process. Um, so what they do is they take all of their experience with 1,500 school districts over to the policies that they have, and they say, based off of our experiences this year, we're seeing that school districts are running into issues with, or we're seeing school districts having to address and they'll make policy recommendations to mm -hmm. us, sometimes in the form of new policies or sometimes in the form of revisions. Neola works closely with uh, several law firms, uh, two of which in Wisconsin. Um, Davis and Kilthow is one, mm -hmm. and I believe the other one is Boardman and Clark, um, where they go through and they say, okay, national level policy is this. How is that operating in Wisconsin? And the Wisconsin attorneys that work with them make recommendations so that they have a, a legal legally defensible policy that's there. They give us that template then. And then the template comes into a board policy committee or to, you know, as we go forward, a finance committee, whatever it might be. And then we work administratively, we work with you as board members to make that policy then fit what we need to do in Waukesha. So some policies like, uh, like a harassment, a discrimination policy, that NEOLA works directly with the Office of Civil Rights on those policies. And that's very important to us as a school district because any complaint around harassment and discrimination can end up with the Office of Civil Rights. And so with NEOLA OCR, their attorneys get together, say this is what you guys need to do. Then we get that policy as a school district and we would make very few changes to that policy as a school district. More or less, we'd be just adding our compliance officers to that policy and putting our address in that policy, our numbers in that policy, so that people know how to get a hold of us. There's other policies that Neola say, hey, it's a good idea for you to have a policy on. For instance, field trips. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I mentioned field trips is because we were in this room when we did the drafting, and it took about four hours for us to come together on one policy with field trips. And we captured how we operated as a school district. There's nothing that... There's nothing in the field trip policy that isn't so unique to Waukesha. It's 100% mm. a Waukesha policy. Similarly, the policy we talked about it last week at the Student Services Committee, uh, the consequences for student misconduct, 5600.01. The board, many boards ago, uh, about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, put together a, a, a board guideline, a policy guideline. And when we made the transition from locally developed policies that were very out of date at the time. It was very challenging to keep up with them to NEOLA. We just took the old policy guideline and we made it board policy. So again, that's a policy that's 100% Waukesha policy. NEOLA has nothing that replicates it. So from the continuum of, you know, we write and develop our own policy all the way to this one is something we really don't have a lot of adjustments on. That's, that's kind of the full scope of it. But in the end, the board passes all of its own policies. We don't mm -hmm. 
we don't say Neola policy, like have to do it. The board takes an opportunity through committees or whatever it will be and vets that policy and makes it fit what we need to do in Waukesha. Um, there are some policies that come to us from the federal government. There are some that come from the state government. There are some that come from the Department mm -hmm. of Public Instruction. We don't have a lot of wiggle room on those policies if we want to stay in compliance with either the state statute, the DPI regulation, or what the feds are saying. But there's also a lot of policies where we have a tremendous amount of latitude as a school district to really say this is how we want to operate. And I'll let you know, anytime we get a policy series from NEOLA, it'll be, you know, this is a, this is a recommended change, uh, and it's recommended because based off of their experience, they're seeing school districts have to face it. This is a legal policy change. This is something that the feds have decided to change, for instance, around the food program or the civil rights work, uh, Title IX. Um, the DPI might make a change based off of seclusion and restraint, mm -hmm. or uh, they, we might get new guidance from the uh, WIAA, the governing body over athletics, and so they'll say that you have to do this within your board policy. So I'll be very clear with you as to what is coming from outside agencies that if we veer from that, we have a lot of exposure. The nice thing about NEOLA is if you, if you take their policies and if you accept the policies within the scope that they, you know, they give you the parameters, they'll defend that policy. They won't defend us as a school district in a legal challenge, but we're not gonna have to pay to have the policy defended. Um, if we go too far off course, or if we write too many of our own policies and we get challenged on it, if those policies are in conflict with one of those agencies that I just mentioned before, we, we have a lot of exposure, and that's why we have tried to operate within those recommended changes or create it based off of Waukesha, like student fees, we really handle student fees locally, um, all the way up to harassment, discrimination stuff, where we wanna make sure that we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's and staying in compliance. So that's how we've used NEOLA. Um, I think with the board passed, and it was like November, uh, February of 2017, I think is when the policy book was passed after we went through a, about a year long revision work um, uh, with with our board, with NEOLA representatives, uh, and with our administration, teachers. We had a bunch of people work on that policy book. There had to be 40 people who have had eyes on it, uh, the original one. Um, so it was a very collaborative process to get to where we were at. And then we've just stayed on top of things, I think, much better uh, since, uh, since we did that. Um, Mr. Montillo and I were at North High School for graduation. You mentioned you graduated, I think you said 25 or 27 years ago, whatever it was. So yeah. he, there were policies, and I was 25 years out of high school, just for some perspective. There were policies that hadn't been modified since before Mr. Montillo or I graduated from high school. And there were some policies on the book that predated my birth that were still on our policy book. And, and, and one of the things that would happen prior to us making this adjustment was, uh, we would run into a situation where somebody would challenge a decision that was made. And the first thing that was asked for, and I said this at many meetings, first thing that our attorneys asked us to look at was where's your policy at? Mm -hmm. They would send them the policy and they'd review the policy and this policy needs revision. And then, so they would make suggested revisions. From a financial aspect, we paid about $15,000 to start with NEOLA. But every year it costs us somewhere around $2,700 to maintain that. And if you look at that for like the number of hours that you'd spend on an attorney to do a policy, if each policy costs say 1200 bucks by the time the attorneys were done writing it and reviewing it, uh, we'd be two or three policies in. And where Neola is doing a full initial review of everything for us, it, it really has been a very, I think, cost beneficial approach for us uh, on policies. And one of the things administratively that I like about it is it encompasses the experiences that many school districts, many school boards, many administrators, many teachers are having across the country. When you think about 1,500 school districts, some very, very large to some that are very, very small, um, you get a tremendous amount of perspective. It's not all large school districts. It's not all small districts that they're serving. It's districts of 500 students. It's districts with you know, 500,000 students, some of them are the largest in the country are using them. So I think the experience for us is very good. Yeah, thank you for that. I know when I was a, a new uh, board member and a new policy committee member, I looked at Neil and said, what in the world is that? And why are they telling us what policy should be in the school district Waukesha? I was completely wrong. Um, that's not what they do. Your explanation is spot on. I know you and I had a number of discussions over the years. Um, NEOLA changes can be as simple and straightforward as you mentioned as I've seen them where they will change the sub 
uh, you know, instead of sub B I, it's B A, and your, you know, your mention or your note on the policy changes. This is statutorily defined or through DPI or something like you mentioned. Um, we've also had instances where they do have uh, a recommended policy. It comes here, and we've pushed back. And we've asked them. I don't remember what the issue was off the top of my head, but I've called NEOLA. They've been very responsive, um, reached out to you. You've contacted NEOLA. We've had clarification um, sought and received. We've also had policies recommended by NEOLA that we don't touch, we don't adopt. Um, I found it very helpful. Uh, and to your point about being um, proactive, I think is a, a good distinction too, because if we are simply looking at issues as they arise, um, our, you know, we reach out to our school district's attorneys, we're being reactive at that point. And that's going to happen, but these policies that come through, we'll see them throughout the year. Um, some of these are things that aren't even on the radar that says, hey, look, this is a trend or this is something that's come up and needs to be addressed. And I found it to be very helpful. Um, and again, Neil has been very responsive. So. Yeah. And, yeah, and we benefit. I mean, so local examples. Uh, there was a situation that came out of Appleton about open meetings uh, a couple of years ago. Neola released uh, in Wisconsin 10 recommended policy updates uh, to school districts to address that one situation that came out of Appleton so that our open meetings, our committee structures, and all of that got updated appropriately so that we learned from the Appleton experience without having to deal with the Appleton experience ourselves. Um, that that's just one very local example. They have in Wisconsin, I think about six or seven consultants working with the, I don't want to say there's a, they have about 200 school districts in Wisconsin that they're working with. <coughs> so all of that information then gets funneled back and we will learn from the school district of 500 kids in northern Wisconsin that had one situation. We will learn from the larger districts across Wisconsin and the country. It, it, I think it really is just beneficial for us to, simply for a learning standpoint, as to, you know, what's out there, what do we need to pay attention to? I agree. Um, so we're still under discussion of the new committee structure. Any further discussion or comments, questions? Okay. It, globally, I do want to thank Dr. Piasek for doing this. Um, Again, going back when I was a new policy committee member, the strong sense was you had to be an expert on every single issue that would come across this district, and that's impossible. Uh, we would have, um, you know, policy recommendations that were very, very thick. Some were Neola recommended statutory changes, but some were very large. I think funneling these to the appropriate committee makes sense. Um, I think it's efficient. Um, I think it's going to be our best way to put the uh, most important issues in front of the most important committees or the best uh, best suited to deal with those so I'm glad to see the change it's going to reduce the amount of I think duplicate work um, because we would have large discussions in the policy committee regarding a you know TNL issue which was great and important but then we'd go do the essentially the same thing at the TNL committee um, and not only is that inefficient for the board but it's inefficient for our constituents they'd have to go watch two separate meetings um, it simply makes sense I'm glad she did it. Um, so I'm looking forward to the new structure. Anything else on the discussion of the new committee structure? No, okay. So move on to action item. Um, we have your pending, pending policy revisions. Yep. So we have, uh, based off of what was laid out before um, and in talking with uh, Mr. Montijo prior to the meeting, just as we set this agenda together, um, the uh, Policy Committee, Finance and Facilities, Human Resources, just to give you some perspective, uh, Student Services Committee and Teaching and Learning, you can see um, uh, the policies under there that we have. Um, so the policy committee uh, at our next meeting will be working through board member behavior and code of conduct, public records and relations with non-school affiliated groups. Those will be the three policies then that will be coming forward to the policy committee at our next meeting. Uh, finance and facilities will be looking at authorization to make electronic fund transfers, post issuance tax exempt bond compliance, accounting system for capital assets and food service. Human Resources will be addressing a new policy, the criminal history record check and employee self-reporting requirement. And then you can see that, just for the perspective of the uh, committee and the people who are watching, if you see a policy that's in the 1,000s and then it has the same number in the 3,000s and the 4,000s, you're seeing a policy that is an administrator. It, it, the same policy language essentially applies to administrators 
professional staff, so our teachers, school psych, social workers, and such, and then our support staff, our paraprofessionals, classroom aides, uh, custodial staff. So there's three distinct series. So 1,000 is administration, 3,000 is professional, 4,000. So that's why you see three separate policies, um, which will essentially have very, very similar language in all of them. And then the 8510, the wellness committee. Um, in Waukesha, Human Resources has been the committee that's taken care of wellness, which is why that recommendation is in that committee. Um, and then the Student Services Committee will be looking at open enrollment program, interdistrict transfer, missing and absent children, children at risk of not graduating high school, and control of casual contact communicable diseases. And then TNL will have controversial issues in the classroom and graduation requirements. And so after this committee meets, and if, if these are in an acceptable location for you, uh, uh, the recommended action then would be to approve them as presented or as modified as we talked about before. After that, then I will set up meetings uh, with the respective assistant superintendents then to get them agendized for their committees to address in the upcoming months. Any questions from the committee? I guess I'm just curious other than Maybe you just said this, I don't know. Um, other than what's listed here, how are the committees gonna know which ones they have? Is that gonna be in board docs and organized a certain way? Yeah, so um, all the policies, again, we'll come back to this committee. So if, if this list has your approval, um, then I will distribute those to the various committees. Um, they'll get them electronically, they'll get them in paper, however we need to work through them. Um, sometimes it's still nice to have a piece of paper in front of you to take the notes down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, it'll be agendized, what are we, in June? You know, Some of these will be agendized in July at various committees, August, and then they'll just work through the, the various committees. Um, one thing that I didn't mention before, Julie and I will still be a resource for all of the assistant superintendents, pol uh, committee chairs, and uh, the, um, the uh, assistants that are assigned to the committees. So we'll take care of the technical stuff and board docs for them. Um, I can, you know, I will attend some meetings if needed to help give some perspective to what those policies are. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll support them in that, in that adjustment here in the months ahead. So are we asking the committees to just kind of receive them and accept them as a responsibility or are we also asking them to then now review each one? Are we They'll have to review okay. the respective areas. So um, for instance, just the Student Services Committee, because that's where my page is at, the Student Services Committee will have agendized those four policies when we get together in July and August. Um, I'll present the policies to the committee, work with Mr. McCaffrey uh, you know, ahead as we set the agenda. And then um, go through, and if there's recommended changes, um, the committee would work through the acceptance of those changes and then forward it to the board for approval. Um, if there's things that we need to seek more clarification on, the committee can ask that we seek more clarification on it. Um, but then, it'll, again, it'll go f through that committee to the board for approval. Okay. And the process in the past, I, if I remember correctly, would go a couple different ways. It would first typically go to the policy committee. Some of those policies would be voted on, approved, and then recommended for the, the whole board. And then some would be moved to a specific other committee sometimes. Sometimes. Or they'd be rotated back for They'd review. come back through. So the, the way that we handled policies uh, for many years was a reading at committee, a reading at board, a reading at committee, and then final approval at the board. Um, that was the process that we used. And we, we kind of expedited that process to if using just the legal thing. Mm -hmm. If it was a legal cha uh, policy change, the policy committee then would do the first reading and then the board would do the second reading uh, of the policy. That would be then approved. So we try to get things done a little bit faster because as you can imagine where policy fits on a month by month basis, we come after the board meeting. Right. So we, we meet after the board meeting and then the following month we would be at the board and then we'd ba be back at that committee and then it just would take a very long time to churn through things. So we wanted to try to get it expedited a little bit quicker. Um, and so then that's that's kind of what Mr. Montillo, maybe a finance policy would go over to the finance committee for final review and move it to the board. Um, otherwise, the policy committee would request more information. I'd get more information, present that to the committee, and then we'd, we'd handle the approval process at the policy committee to the full board. Ultimately, and just so everybody knows, ultimately the full board makes the final approval on all policies. Right. And that'll either happen on the consent agenda or that'll happen under the policy committee 
listing um, uh, as a separate item in the board uh, on the board agenda. Very good. So this is an action item. Any more uh, questions for the administration from the committee? I don't think so. Okay. Is there a motion on this issue? I so move. Uh, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> second. And, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes three ayes, uh, <clears throat> three to zero. Next issue is, I don't believe there's any other discussion or information items. Uh, is that correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. So we'll move to other business. Recommendation for future committee meetings. Uh, any recommendations for future committee meetings from committee members? No. Okay. If you have any, email myself or Dr. Cook, and we'll uh, discuss those and see if we can uh, get those on the, the agenda. Um, to you, if I may. Yes. Um, we will be getting a packet release from Neola shortly, uh, probably come in July or August. Mm. Um, don't know how many policies are going to be in there. They usually average somewhere like 30 to 35. Mm. So um, I would anticipate that the July agenda, because uh, as we get going with some of these policies, we have a handle, handful of them for us to deal with. Like the July agenda will probably be a shorter agenda just to forecast for you. Mm. But then after we get that and start going, I would anticipate sometime in September you would see a pretty thick packet of policies that you would have to review as a committee and then move along to other committees from there. Okay. But so a packet from them of policies that are just happening in other districts? They will or? come together and make recommended changes. And so they do that twice a year. Oh, okay. So, so they they'll do a, they'll do like a summer release and that summer release will be based off of about six months of their experience. And then that'll come to you for consideration. I see. If you want to approve it or not. The second one usually comes January, February ish. So it, it will have a couple really heavy months, and we might have some months where we don't need to meet. So very good. Speaking of which, uh, do we have? I know it's ad hoc, but um, like next meeting. Yeah, next meeting date. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know if we have one set yet. Do we don't? Okay, we'll work and. Um, I'll deal with her, Mr. or Dr. Cook, and we'll get a date. Sure. Okay. May I ask you, at 7 a.m., does that work for you? It does, certainly for me. It's following me. I mean. Most, most days. Okay. Most school year starts with C. Okay. 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 So we'll shoot for 7 a.m. if, um, if, if it there's works issues. With we members. Members. Yep. And is it, um, so what is this, uh, fourth Monday or whatever this is? <laughs> Yeah, and given given that it's three members, I'll always have Julie poll you ahead of time. Uh, we okay. don't necessarily need to be a set date like some of the other committees are, okay. um, but if we can find a date, a Monday morning, a Tuesday morning, whatever fits your schedule, um, I'm I'm happy to come in at seven, for a seven a.m. meeting if it works for you, and we can pick a day of the week that works best for you as well. Sounds good. I appreciate that. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, we're adjourned then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, thank you.